Good afternoon. I'm Shane Hossel, currently a PhD student at the University of Bath, and today I'll be presenting some results on the work I'm undertaking, uh, timber vaults for low embodied carbon structures. A bit of an outline, I'll be presenting a bit of a background, the aim to the project, the optimization process that has been followed, um, some vault optimization results, and then a bit of a <clears throat> conclusion, and then future work. Okay, so a bit of background. So the figure shows the breakdown of various components that make up a building and their embodied carbon contributions, with the construction industry contributing more than 10% of the overall global greenhouse gas emissions and with floors contributing a significant proportion of the overall st structure's embodied carbon, optimizing floors will enable large embodied carbon savings from buildings. So why timber vaults? In nature, trees predominantly work in compression and need to withstand large horizontal forces and therefore using timber in vaults closely mimics this behavior. Also, timber has a low strength to weight ratio, shows plastic failure in compression. It's stronger in compression than in tension. However, the disadvantages are is that uh, that shows a brittle failure, which often limits the design and it has low stiffness. In contrast, vaults have a high geometric stiffness. They can be lightweight and they predominantly work in compression, therefore complementing the timber's compression properties. However, the disadvantages include they can be difficult to fabricate and can be more labor intensive. So can vaulted timber floors lead to more efficient structures? So the goal of my research is to develop an ultra low embodied carbon floor system by integrating the structural um, efficiency of vaults and the strength and renewable properties of timber. The two diagrams on the right show the two concepts or proposed barrel vault system or barrel and groin vault systems, which comprise of either um, curved glue lamb or cross laminated timber with horizontal steel ties to restrain the thrust forces produced by the arches or the vaults. The addition of um, ribs and granular infill material will provide a level surface. So the methodology that has been followed, the optimization uses genetic algorithms to optimize the barrel and groin vault designs, focusing on key variables such as the vault height, the number and thickness of the lamellas and the steel tie diameters. These variables are then input into a parametric model using Python and the ANSYS model PyANSYS and using shell elements to undertake the structural analysis. The algorithm then performs capacity checks for both the ultimate and serviceability limit states assessing factors such as strength, deflection, and vibration. We also calculate an objective function in terms of either embodied carbon or cost, or both when looking at multi-objective optimization. And if the utilization of the vault is exceeded, a penalty terms are then applied to the fitness function um, and driving the iterative process until the most efficient and safe solution has been achieved. So some results. So the optimization results for the barrel vault shown in the plot shows variations in the arch height from zero to 1.5 meters and the corresponding changes in the embodied carbon for an eight meter span. The figure shows the embodied carbon contributions for each of the components that make up the barrel vault. So initially increasing the um, the height from zero meters, which is a conventionally CLT floor, there is an increase in the embodied carbon as the solution tends to be bending dominated. However, at around 0 0.25 meters, the optimal solution shifts from a bending governed solution to compression, resulting in a reduction in the, in the embodied carbon. With continual increase in the rise, there's a reduction in the steel's embodied carbon with the optimal solution occurring at around 0 0.6 meters. Beyond this, a further increase in the rise results in larger curvature with fabrication stresses and material wastage due to planing um, thinner lamellas governing the solution. Therefore, when looking at shallow vaults, the benefits is you have a low floor thickness. However, due to the large horizontal thrust forces, you need a large um, increase in the tie diameter. There's an increase in the granular, uh, reduction in the granular infill material, so there's less self weight. And with the lower curvature, you need, you can have thicker lamellas, however, fewer lamellas, so there's a low um, amount of wastage due to planing.
However, when looking um, at deep vaults, um, you have an increase in rise, so therefore you have a thicker floor system. Um, however, the horizontal thrust forces are less, so you can have thinner tie diameters, so therefore less embodied carbon from the ties. However, you have an increase in the self weight from the um, granular infill material, but due to the increased curvature, you need thinner and more lamellas, so you have an increase in the amount of wastage due to planing as well as additional adhesive. So moving on to um, the groin vaults. So the, the slide features an exploded view of an eight by eight meter parabolic timber groin vault, highlighting its key components, which include the longitudinal and transverse lamellas, steel ties, the ribs, and the granular infill material. The optimization process identified an ideal arch height of around 1.4 meters with the lamellar thicknesses and the longitudinal direction being thinner than that in the transverse direction. Now the initial optimization did not include the ribs or the granular infill material just to um, determine the impacts without them. The design aimed at meeting both the ultimate and serviceability limit states, primarily addressing challenges in vibration serviceability and the structural strength, which will be discussed further. Now in the longitudinal direction, stresses develop in the lamellas during the fabrication as they are bent into their final curvature. These fabrication stresses need to be included in the design along with the axial and bending stresses to assess the final stress state in the section. Conversely, in the transverse direction, the lamellas remain straight and therefore have zero fabrication stresses. Despite appearing counter to the longitudinal lamellas are selected to minimize the fabrication stresses with the transverse lamellas used to increase the spacing and the effective depth of the section to, to accommodate the unfavorable load combinations. Now this figure shows the utilization of the vault under half load and calculated using the fund apart failure criteria for orthotropic materials such as timber. The maximum utilization occurs at the supports and the, along the quarter length of the vault. The chosen support width is critical with two narrow supports governing the final design. However, this can be mitigated by locally increasing the vault's thickness or strengthening using steel flinch plates. Now the maximum stress that occurs at the re-entrant corner of the support, however, this stress is mesh size dependent and therefore is not included in the design. Instead, an equivalent stress is calculated as shown as at the bottom left. Um, at the supports using the reactions and assumes that the timber's plastic behavior allows for stress distribution. Now coming on to vibration serviceability, vibration serviceability is a key parameter or criteria that needs to be assessed. Um, and it's assessed by solving the dynamic equation of motion for footfall loading to determine the acceleration and velocity responses. These responses were used then to calculate a response factor according to the new Eurocode um, 5 revision. The plot shows the response factor calculated each point on the floor with both the excitation and the responses locations coinciding. The figures on the right show the first two mode shapes with the peak response occurring at the center for the first mode and, the, and around the quarter points for the second mode. Also, you'll notice that the, the vibration is a high frequency floor, therefore it's impulsive loading. Now the floor was optimized by ensuring that the response factor did not exceed eight, which is typical for offices um, based on the first mode. However, as can be seen, the maximum response occurs along the creases or the groins at approximately the quarter points, and this will be considered in future designs. However, the addition of ribs for stiffness and the granular infill material could enhance the vibration damping, especially in the second mode. Okay, so the optimization was then repeated for spans from 6 to 14 meters and compared to a conventional CLT floor system. Results show that the groin vault achieves an embodied carbon saving of between 54 and 63 percent, with larger um, savings occurring at longer spans. Therefore, vaulted timber floors can lead to more efficient floors. So in conclusion, I'll discuss a bit of future work. Current work is looking at the performance of glue lamb timber arches. 
um, to assess the, the fabrication stresses during the fabrication of the arches or the curved beams. And then we'll also focus on the physical testing of the growing vaults to test the fabrication feasibility of the vaults, um, the connections between the panels, and also to validate the numerical models through strength and vibration testing. Um, and there we, go. there we go. Thanks a lot and thanks for your attention.